Hello and welcome to the CA ArcServe D2D how-to video series. In this video, we'll show you how to restore Microsoft Exchange mail objects from a recovery point. Each time D2D performs a successful backup, a point-in-time snapshot image of your backup is also created. This collection of recovery points allows you to locate and specify exactly which backup image you want to restore. For Exchange, you can browse these recovery points to locate the individual objects, such as mailboxes, folders, or mail that you want to restore. To perform this type of Exchange granular restore, the account must have the proper required permissions. For more information about these Exchange account permissions, please refer to the D2D product documentation. If you encounter a problem where your data becomes lost or damaged, you can use this collection of saved recovery points to rewind your system back to a point in time prior to the problem and then restore the known good data that was backed up at that time. In a way, D2D uses these recovery points almost like a time machine to let you go back in time and fix a problem like it was before it ever happened. In this video, we'll show you how to restore selected exchange objects to a specified destination using recovery point. Let's get started. From the D2D homepage, click Restore to open the Restore Methods dialog, and then select the Restore Exchange Mails option. The Restore Exchange Mails dialog opens. First, specify or browse to the location where your backup images are stored. Click the green arrow to verify the connection. You may be prompted for user credentials. When you select a source, the calendar view highlights all dates in green that contain recovery points for that backup source. Click on the date for the recovery point you want to restore. The corresponding Exchange Mailbox databases for that date are displayed. Next, select the Exchange Mailbox database that you want to restore and click Next. The view of the Restore Exchange Mails dialog is updated to now display a listing of the mailbox content for your selected database. Now if you did not enable the Exchange Granular Restore Catalog option during your backup, a pop-up notification message will ask you if you want to generate the catalog at this time. And if you say no, you will not be able to browse to or select a granular recovery point, but instead you would only be able to perform a full database restore. Remember, D2D provides the capability to perform Exchange Granular Restore for emails only. Calendar, contacts, notes, and tasks restores are not supported. From here, you can select the level of Exchange objects to be restored, such as a mailbox, folder, or individual mail. You can select the entire content or partial contents of the Exchange object, or select multiple Exchange objects to restore. Here are some scenarios you can use to restore mail. Select the Mailbox Database to restore all of the mailboxes within that database. Select the Mailbox to restore all the corresponding folders and mail objects within that mailbox. Select the folder within a selected mailbox to restore all the corresponding mail objects within that folder. And select Individual Mail Objects to restore only the selected objects. When you are finished specifying all the Exchange objects to be restored, click Next. The Restore Options dialog opens. From here, you need to choose the Restore Destination. You can restore to the original location from where the backup image was captured, restore the dump file only, or restore to an alternate location. If you choose to restore the mail to the original location, the mail will retain the same hierarchy and be restored to its original mailbox and the original folder. When restoring a mailbox or mail to the original location, Make sure the destination mailbox is available, or else the restore will fail. If you choose to restore the dump file only, the mail will be restored to a disk. This disk location can be either local or a remote machine, and again, the restored mail will maintain the same hierarchy as they had in the original mailbox. However, the file name will now become the subject title of the mail. For this option, you also need to specify what you want D2D to do to resolve a conflict situation. In Exchange, you can have multiple mail objects with the same name under the same folder. However, in a file system, two files with the same name cannot coexist under the same folder. There are two options to resolve this conflict situation. If you select Rename, and on the disk there is already a file with the same name as the mail subject, D2D will still rename the mail subject, but will append a number at the end of the mail subject. 
If you select Overwrite and on the disk there is already a file with the same name as the mail subject, D2D will then overwrite that file. It is important to know that when you select individual mail objects to restore to the disk, by default, the format of the restored mail will be an MSG file and not a PST file. If you choose to restore the mail to an alternate location, you can specify or browse to the location where your backup images will be restored. For this option, the destination must be a mailbox in the same exchange organization, and a new folder name is required. When restoring mail to an alternate location, if the specified destination folder already exists, the restore will continue. However, if the specified folder does not exist, then D2D will create the folder first and then continue the restore. It is important to know that if you are attempting to restore mails to an alternate location, the destination cannot be a public folder. Again, you may need to provide username and password credentials to gain access to that alternate location. And when you are finished specifying the restore options, click Next. The Restore Summary dialog is displayed. Review the displayed information to verify that all restore options and settings are correct. If the information is not correct, click Previous and go back to change the incorrect setting. If the information is correct, click Finish to launch the restore process. D2D confirms the restore job was successfully submitted and displays the progress on the job monitor. That's it. For more detailed information about this procedure, you should always check the official D2D user documentation. Thanks for watching and be sure to visit our website where you can view other titles in this video series.